So the first thing that we always need to do is check out the website. So we're going to go to Google and we're going to go for indeed.com. We're going to do a search for a uh, job spec and a place. So we have some kind of data to get to. Um, and here we are. So the first thing I'm actually going to look at right here is the pagination. I can see the URL at the top and I'm going to see how it changes when I move to the next page. I'll just give you an idea of how everything's working. So by clicking on page two, I can see that it goes and gives me this extra part of the URL that says and start is equal to 10. So I'm assuming that's the number of records. So if I change that back to zero, uh, we get the first lot again here, see page one. Or if we change it to 20, we actually end up on page three. So that should be absolutely fine. 10, page two, great. So now I know what the URL is. Um, I'm going to copy that with the pagination on the end. And I'm just going to quickly just put that in here. The URL is equal to just so I've got that saved. So to check how we could scrape this site, um, I always do view source first, unless it looks really like it's JavaScript, which this one doesn't. And then I'm just going to type in some text, which I think was on the page. And I'm going to check to see if it is in the HTML somewhere. Uh, it looks like it is. We've got this data here, which is quite useful, but not everything. Keep going down uh, and we can see right here, there is all the information available in the HTML. So we can use Python, uh, we can use um, request a beautiful script to scrape this information. So now that I know that, oh, I'm going to go back to my code and I'm going to start writing. We're going to import requests. You're going to need that. Let's make this one more bigger. There we go. And then I'm going to do also uh, from BS4 import beautiful soup, which is what we're going to use to pass the data. So I always work on a three uh, function approach, which is uh, extract, transform, and load, which are a common uh, computing term. So the first one is going to be extract, and that's going to be getting the data off the website. So we're going to do define, we're going to go extract, and we're going to give it a page. Now what this means is that when we run this function, we are going to put the page that we choose into the URL inside the function. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to indent the URL, and at the end of it where we said start is equal to zero, what I'm going to do is I'll put the curly brackets, and I'm going to write the word page, and that is because that page is, uh, matches this. And at the start of the string, I'm going to put an F, and we'll turn this into an F string. So what this does is that when we run this function, and we give it a page into the, into the function there, whatever we put here will appear in here. So that was our 0, our 10, 20, 30, etc, etc. So now that that's done, I'm going to also get some custom user agents. So I'm just going to quickly Google uh, my user agent. I'm going to copy the string. And I'm going to go back to my code and I'm just going to type this in here. I'm going to go headers is equal to, and it's user-agent as a Python dictionary, and I'm going to paste that in there. Great. So now that I've got the URL and the headers set, I can do my request. So r is equal to requests.get URL and then headers, like that. The next thing that we want to do is uh, just test that this works. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do uh, return r dot status code and I'm going to run that with underneath I'm just going to write extract and then I'm going to do zero because zero was the first page. I'm going to run that uh, and they said it didn't print it. So we're returning it but it didn't print it. There we go. So we did get 200 so I know that this is working. So let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of our return statement as well because we're going to add one more thing in here. So what we're actually going to add in here now is we're going to do our soup variable. So we're going to say soup is equal to beautiful soup. and then r.content, and then we're going to use the HTML parser, like so. You can use whichever one you want, I'm just using this one at the moment. And then we're going to return our function, and we're going to return the suit. So when we run this with a page number, what it's going to do is it's going to get the information, and then it's going to return the whole soup. So what we would have to do is we'd have to store this into a variable so we can then give it to our next function, which is the transform. So I'm just going to put that at the bottom here. For the moment, I'm just going to say, uh, we'll just call it C is equal to uh, extract. And then I'm going to give it zero again for the first page. We're just going to leave that down there for the moment. So now we need to go back to the website and we need to have a quick look and see in the HTML where the data is that we are after. So to do that, I like to use the inspect tool, it's easier. And what we are looking for is basically each one of these sort of blocks should have a class or a div. And there it is right away. So we can see on the right hand side, the div class of job search, SERP, job card, etc. etc. Now each one of those is a new job. If we had the, if we scroll down a bit, you can see they'll get highlighted. Um, so what we can do is we know that all the information is in here. If we open that up, we can see we've got the title, uh, etc. etc. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get this copied, and I'm going to actually just use the first part of it to match. 
We go back to our code, and now I'm going to start our second function, which is transform. So I'm going to go transform. Now we need to give this a variable, and I'm just going to put soup here because we are going to return this soup from here, and then we're going to pass it into this one. So we might as well call this soup as well. So now what we want to do is we were going to say, uh, let's just call it divs is equal to soup dot find all, and it was a div and a class with an underscore. Remember, is equal to job search set card like that. So what that's going to do is it's going to open up the page, it's going to pass through, and it's going to find all of the all of the instances where the div is this. So I can do uh, let's do return, and we'll do length of divs for now. And after we've done our extract here, we can actually just go do uh, we'll do we need to do print. This will just show us how many there are. Transform, and we give it our C variable because that's what we call it here. We've called it soup all along here. We're actually calling it C right there. So if we run that, we should hopefully get a number back. We do, we've got 15. So we've actually picked up 15 divs that match this um, on the first page. Great, so I'll get rid of the print statement here, and we're not going to return the length of the divs because that is not useful to us. But what we want to do is we want to loop through each div and get out the respective information. So back to the website again. And if we hover over our div class again, there it is. Within the first one, the H2 class of title, it has the job title, but actually within that, we have an A tag um, that has the text underneath. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go for the A tag in this case. So we'll go back to our code and we'll do, we need to do a for loop to loop through every one. So we're going to do for um, item in divs. You can call that variable whatever you like. I'm just really used to using item, so that's what I use. And I'm going to say uh, title for job title is equal to item.find. It's an A tag. Hopefully that will do because this is the first A tag within the div. So when we do a find, we find the first instance. If we do find all, it returns a list. Now we don't want that in this case, so we're just going to use find and we're going to return the first A tag. So the, here's our div where we're looking for. And the first A tag we come across is this one. So we go back to our code. Uh, and I'm going to do print title here. I'm going to put dot text underneath on that on the end of that one. Uh, and now I'm going to uh, put a return on the end of our function, and we'll check to see what comes out now. So then we can do uh, print. Um, I don't think we need to do print transform because we're not returning it. We can just do transform C because our print is within our function. Run that, and you can see we've got the job titles back there. Now it looks like there is a lot of white space, so we can get rid of that quite quickly and easily with dot strip, and that should remove all of the white space around the text that we are scraping. There we go, and now we have a nice stripped out list of the job titles that are on that website matching this text strip. Cool, so now we know that that works, I'm gonna get rid of these, we don't want them, and we're gonna go ahead and try and get more information because we need more than just the title. So the next thing we can do is we can look through and we can see that there is a summary and it should be a company. Hover over it. Okay, so we get a company, and that is in a span tag with a class of company. So let's go ahead and get that. So we'll do company is equal to item.find, and it was a span tag. And the class was company. And again, I'm going to do dot text, and because the last one had dot strip, I'm going to do that as well, uh, because just in case it's got white text around it as well. So we're gonna do print company this time. Didn't put equals in here, so we're not actually looking for anything. And there we go. So if we run this, we should get the company information. Okay, so we did. It looks like Facebook are hiring, not on this page, so we must be picking up some more information from somewhere else. Oh yeah, there we go. Cool. So that works. Now the next thing we want to do is we wanna try and get some more information out. So we'll go back to our website again, what else is useful? Well, I think uh, some of them have a uh, salary that I noticed on here. So what we can do is we can see where that is hidden. We can say it's in span class of salary text, but not everyone has that on there. So if we were to try and look for it in this, you can't, so you can see that there is no salary text on there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a try, we're gonna do try, and we're gonna do try for salary is equal to item.find, uh, and it was, I've forgotten, span, span tag, and the class, is equal to salary text. And again, I'm going to do .text and .strip just to get rid of all the stuff we don't want. But we know that that's not in every single one, so we need to do accept. And because we're doing the accept, but we still want to add something because we're going to create a dictionary with all of the information in at the end, I'm actually going to put another variable in here, a salary, because we're going to have that in our dictionary, of nothing, just blank. OK, 
Okay, so that's good. And let's go back and find something else. Now, one thing I liked was the summary because this was a list of text that was in every single one. Uh, and it kind of sums up, as it's a summary, what they are expecting from you. Uh, so let's go here, and it's a div with a class of summary. And I'm just going to ignore the list because uh, some of them only have one or two, and I'm just going to take the summary of the class, and we're going to put all of that text into one variable. So let's do summary is equal to item.find, and it was a div, and it was a class, and it was a summary. So if it wasn't a class, each one of these was a class, so we're able to do class with the underscore. If it wasn't, let's say it was an ID, you can pass in a Python dictionary here, you can do like this. So if it was ID, you could do ID, and that would work. I'll show you, we'll use class, because it works with both. Class, summary, and dot text, and dot strip. So we now have title, the company, the salary if it's there, the summary if it's there. What else could we go for? I think that's probably about it. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it at that and we're going to go and get, uh, we're gonna go and create our dictionary now. So once we've looped through all of those, we would want to store all this information into a dictionary so we can then append it to a list and manipulate our list nice and easy. So I'm gonna do, and we'll call it job. We're gonna call it job is equal to, and we're gonna start our dictionary. And our first one is title, and that is the title that we created. Uh, and then company, and that is company. Then we'll do the salary if it's there. And then we'll put in the summary, which is the text, which is more like the description, really. Okay, so that's good. So now we've done that, what I'm gonna do is outside of our function, I'm gonna create a list that we're gonna uh, append all of these two. So we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna call it job list like this. So whilst we, because we've got this outside of it under here, we can actually do job list .append our job here. And because what we're going to do, even though this uh, function is above our um, job list here, we're actually running it down here. So we're going to create a blank list and then with our function, which is underneath, we're going to append to that list within it. Um, so what we need to do now is we just need to return and just make sure that you put your return on the correct line. Otherwise, you'll do one job and then it will return out of your function and you won't get that many results. Right, so hopefully if I've made no uh, mistakes there, we can now run our code. So we've got our empty list. We're looking for the first page. We're transforming that so now we just want to do job list dot uh, let's just run the length on it first we might get some errors if i've made some mistakes so this should just print out how many results we got which i think was 15. again good we've got 15 so now let's print the actual data there we go so we've now got a list of dictionaries with a title a company a salary and a summary um, which has the text information in it. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm just going to tidy up the summary text a bit and I'm going to replace the new lines with nothing. So under over the summary we've got dot strip, I'm going to do dot replace and I'm going to do uh, backslash n which is a new line. So we're going to replace the new lines with nothing. Um, now hopefully that, that our data should look a bit nicer. Okay that's better. So we've removed all of that so that's good. Great so we've managed to scrape the first page and um, we know our functions work so we've extracted it using requests, uh, beautiful soup, we return our soup out of this function, we pick our soup up with, the, with our transform function, we look for all of the divs which were the job cards, and then we loop through them and get the title, company, salary and summary if it was available. If there is other information which is only available in some, maybe some descriptors or another, don't forget you can use try and accept like I've done here. And we created a job dictionary and we've appended it to our list, and our list is down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna collapse these functions because we know that they work, and I'm going to import pandas as pd because we are going to use a data frame for this and we get rid of our print statement because we don't need it. I'm going to leave our job list there like that. Now I'm going to do a for loop to loop through some pages. So I'm going to do for i in range. Now normally when you do a range it would do whole integers so if you did between 0 and 10 you would get 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But we can actually determine the steps that it goes through because our pages were uh, 0, 10, 20, etc, etc. So I'm going to do 0 and I'm going to go up to page, let's just do 40 for now, and I'm going to do in 10. So it is 0 to 40, um, but that will give us uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, so 3 pages, and it will be in a step of 10. So let's indent this, um, and then we can do, uh, let's print the length of the job list again, and let that run. So this should just go through the first three pages and we've actually returned 60 results. 
so 60 job information, which is pretty cool. Great, so that would be the simplest way to do it. Um, if you wanted to get multiple pages, if you weren't sure how many pages there were rather, you could do a while loop. You could go to the end and see what, um, see where it ends and see what happens and then just add in some error handling for that. I'm just going to add this, add this information now to a data frame. So I'm going to do df is equal to a pd dot data frame and then our job list. So that just creates a pandas data frame. I'm going to print df.head so we can see the first ones. And then I'm going to do df.2 CSV and I'm going to call this jobs.csv. So we're going to create a CSV file with this information here. And inside our um, loop, I like to put a print statement so I can see what's happening. So I'm just going to do print uh, getting page and we're going to create an F string here and we're going to do F. And although it's in tens, we'll still know roughly where we are. And we can put I in there, not like that, like this. Um, even though it's in tens, we'll still know where we're at. So let's run that again. Getting page 0, 10, 20, 30. And we can see that we've returned a nice data frame with that information. And if I go into our Explorer, we've got a jobs CSV file uh, with the title, company, salary, and the summary. So this is pretty cool. You could do a lot more with this. Um, if I was going to do this uh, for myself, perhaps I would want to scrape the jobs maybe once a day and have some kind of machine learning perhaps, or maybe look at uh, what the words are in the summary and if you pick up something uh, specific, so maybe you're looking for uh, something really specific and you can try and find that information and then notify yourself, or maybe just see what jobs are available. So that's it guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this one. Uh, nice and easy web scraping with Request Beautiful Soup again. Uh, make sure you use some nice functions so you can keep track of everything. Your code is nice and neat. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, consider subscribing for more web scraping content. Loads on my channel already and more to come. Main videos.